A major factor that affects the performance and comfort of a heating and cooling system is airflow across the coil. When we look at a traditional HVAC system, typically what we have, or certainly in this case here, we have a return air ducts, air cleaner. Here we have our forced air furnace. And then we have our evaporative or cooling coil. And that goes into our supply plenum, which is the start of our distribution system. And then, of course, our distribution system is the ductwork that supplies cool air and air conditioning mode throughout the, uh, throughout the home. Now, uh, so the air basically flows from the returns through the system. A major factor that affects the performance is how much airflow goes across this evaporative coil. And if there's not enough airflow, the system doesn't get enough heat transfer to adequately reject that heat from the house. So in other words, we have this coil and it has refrigerant in it, right? And that uh, refrigerant wants to pick up that heat. But if we don't have enough airflow to transfer that, we've got some serious problems. And remember, airflow across the air conditioner's evaporator coil it's just one of our six air conditioner performance factors. We also need to pay attention to duct leakage, duct conduction, the refrigerant charge in the system, the sizing of the system, and how the air delivers air into each room. And so if we have a distribution system or ductwork that has lots of compressions or hard bends where you have lots of restrictions, that increases what we call the static pressure in the system. In other words, the more restrictions that we have, the less efficient the system is. We want the airflow to be to flow freely through the ducts. And if we have lots of, of compressions and so forth, that's not going to be the case. We'd like our total airflow to be a nominal 400 CFM per ton. Um, a ton is the amount of cooling that the system produces. It's our sizing unit for air conditioners. That's 12,000 BTUs. And 12,000 BTUs per hour. So nominal 400 CFM per ton, but we need to adjust the airflow for the climate. In dry climates, like western climates, we want the airflow to be up around 500 cubic feet per minute a ton. And in more moist climates, we want the airflow to be down around 350 cubic feet per minute a ton. That ensures that we get adequate airflow for proper cooling and dehumidification. Right. So on this furnace, the manufacturer has specified that we can have a maximum static pressure of 125 pascals of total external pressure. We use our pressure gauge to measure the pressure entering the furnace and the pressure leaving the furnace. We see that the entering negative pressure is 180 pascals and the discharge pressure is at 230 pascals. So that gives us a total external static pressure of about 410 pascals way in excess of what the manufacturer allows. So if we look at this on a scale and we're from minus 180 all the way to positive 230, that's 410 pascals of pressure difference, which is way above the 125 pascals recommended by the manufacturer. So what that means, that means we've got a lot of restrictions here that we have to figure out how to fix in order to get adequate airflow to provide cooling and efficiency. The other fix we might consider as we make improvements to the thermal envelope and reduce the heat loss and heat gain from the home is we might be able to install smaller equipment, which means the restrictions that are there won't be significant because we will only need to move maybe half as much airflow. So the course of action with this system is to fix those restrictions and get the adequate airflow. All in all, a good home performance contractor takes measurements like this so he can assess the overall performance of the system and simply not just go in and seal the ducts, but really check up and see what kind of pressure drops you have to really, it's kind of like a blood pressure check to check the health of the system.